of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Welcome to In-Depth. Today, we're going to talk about a, a very weird verse. It's in Exodus 13, verse 18. God led the people around by the way of the wilderness. So in context, this is when God led the people out of Egypt. And uh, this is what the, the scripture reads. Then it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the land of Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war, and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up in orderly, orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. I don't have a map with me right now, but you can, you can look this up. So it's so easy, it was so easy to lead, lead the people on land by foot just to go to Israel, to the, land, to the promised land that these people were supposed to go possess. But God always has a different plan. My logic says, boom, boom, there. But God's wisdom is different. My logic cannot be compared to God's wisdom. And this is what we see here. Even it says, although it was near. But God said, lest perhaps the people change their mind when they see war and return to Egypt. So in the people's eyes, in Egypt, although there was no war, they were, they were servants. And they worked really hard to get food. They would have seen that, they would have seen that oppression to be better than war. So what they lived in, they thought that was peaceful. But God wanted to see them the promised land, the land full of milk and honey, and didn't want them to see the shed of blood, all the violence, the hatred. He wanted to to plant in them the seed for love, the seed for joy, for comfort, and for peace. Proverbs 30, chapter 24, sorry, verse 28 to, 24 to 28. This has uh, to do with how they proceeded out of Egypt. So the people only had Moses, okay? And God, of course, as a leader. However, they didn't know, they only heard of God as the God of Father. Um, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They didn't know what his name was even. They just know that he was a God. So here it says, There are four things which are little on the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. The rock badgers are a feeble folk, yet they make their homes in the, in the crags. The locusts have no kings, yet they all advanced in ranks. The spider skillfully grasps with his hand, and it is in king's palaces. Let's look at the locusts, how having no king, they advanced in ranks. And this is what the people of God were. Although they didn't have a king with them, they only had Moses, a prophet, leading them. They still proceeded in ranks. And God's people are always organized and civilized in all that they do, and we should learn from this. Exodus 13, so they took their journey from Succoth and camped in Etham, at the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud and led the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. So as to go by day and night, he did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Look at his leadership here. He knows that he's leading these people. And these people will need light and will need guidance because they're in the wilderness. No one likes the idea of being in the wilderness. I want to be in the comfort of my own home. I want to get into heaven from there. But that's not how it works. Jesus himself was led in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. That was his preparation before going to serve, before preaching the kingdom of God. John the Baptist was the same thing. He was in the wilderness his entire life, after which he started his mission. Elijah was the same thing. Elijah, if you read his, his, his story, he was from no man's land, 
And then God called him, he went to the king, he, he told him it's not going to rain for three and a half years until I, well, he told him it's not going to rain until I say so, and that period was three and a half years. And God just told him to go to the wilderness. If you think about it, this is a man who just stood in front of the king, and boom, he gave him that. In himself, he would have said, okay, so what's next? We got to go preach some more, we got to go tell more prophecies, do this, do that. But God said, no, go to the wilderness, to cut him down, to humble him. This is what the wilderness does. It prepares the men of God to go on mission, to start a life of service for him. It brings them, it brings everything into perspective. This is why a lot of people that go on mission to serve in Africa, they say, we went out of our bubble, because now we see a different perspective in life. We see other people who live in a different way. It brings things into perspective. This is going to sound weird, but Joseph himself was led in the wilderness. So Joseph was a child loved by his father. He was spoiled. He got the nice colored shirt. His brothers got jealous. He had all these dreams he shared with his brothers and his brothers didn't like him. So one day, they saw him in the wilderness, they threw him down a well. They didn't like him, so they wanted, they wanted him to die. God had a different plan. A few people going to Egypt passed by. His brothers sold Joseph to them. He went to Egypt, he, he was there as a servant in a man's house. And then something happened, he went to prison, he was there for a while, and then he stood in front of the king. His life, although wasn't in the physical wilderness, but it, to him it was wilderness. He was wondering why this was happening to him, because he was a good guy. He believed in God, he loved God, he, he had integrity, he was righteous in all that he did. Yet, all that prepared him to stand in front of a king, Pharaoh at the time, and lead people of Egypt out of the famine that was going to hit. Not, but not only Egypt, all, all the countries around Egypt came to Egypt to buy wheat, to buy food, because only through him did they have food to eat. It was the wilderness that prepared him for his mission. God takes us to rough places to strengthen us, so that we can have courage, so that we can lead. Exodus chapter 17. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they turn and camp before Pi Hiroth, between Megdal and the sea, opposite Baal Zemphon. You shall camp before it by the sea, for Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are bewildered by the land, the wilderness has closed them in. So God sending people out to the wilderness, he warns them, he tells them, be careful, such and such is going to happen. And here he told Moses to tell the people that Pharaoh will think that you're lost and will come after you. Now what happens is, when the people of God saw this, they said to themselves, or they speaking to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken, taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us? To bring us out of Egypt, is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. They didn't see God's plan at the time. Although they had the pillar of fire by night leading them, and the cloud in the morning, they still thought they were lost. They didn't see the glory of God yet. And in the wilderness, we will see the glory of God. It will be so clear that not only us will see it, but others will see it and will know that our God is the true God. So Moses said, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you will see again no more forever. I pray that all of us together, if one day we're in the wilderness, we focus on God's guidance, we focus on the fire that He sets before us to lead us, 
and that we wait and stand still and see his salvation. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Andy. I'll see you next time.